Hello, hello, hello. No, you're breathtaking. Um, <laughs> so, we are here again. The main event. The main event today. You'll recall. On Friday. The spaghetti squash. Well, I only used half of it. And I saved half of it. And here it is. It's been wrapped up. And we're going to use it up uh, today. Because it doesn't... Because it's cooked, so it's not going to keep much longer. So we got to get to it. And I was talking with Ryuya, our friend, uh, who was asking about using it in Thai flavors. And we got into more detail, and I think I agree. These are more similar to rice vermicelli than they are to an Italian pasta. So I want to try doing that, see if they act enough like that to do a pad thai, which is a Thai stir-fried noodle thing that you typically uses. Well, it can use a variety of, of noodles, but one of the options is a rice vermicelli. Um, also, I want to try doing spring rolls with them, which is another place that you use those rice vermicelli. Uh, so we've got two separate things. Now, I'm torn on what my main protein is going to be because I want it to be the same across all of them so I don't have to prepare multiple things. We could do shrimp. I've, I have some frozen shrimp that I've been working my way through because uh, they're getting a little bit freezer burn, so we're starting to use them up. I've got some tofu that would be quite good in multiple locations. But just today, I found, and I have to show you that this is an insane... This is an insane price. Um, I wasn't going to buy any meat today. I, I, I got plenty. I got plenty. I don't need meat. I bought meat. Um, I bought 73 cents for a, a one pound turkey thigh. Um, so we could do turkey. We could do a turkey pad thai and a turkey spring roll. That is in that price is insane, uh, and I have an idea of how to cook it too. I don't have to though, because it's not unlike a lot of meat. It's not short dated. I could hold it and do something fun with it. Maybe tomorrow. Maybe later in the week. Um, and I'm not sure which option I want to go with today is the thing. Uh, and I. <laughs> course asking the question right at the start like this nobody here to answer it <laughs> so I guess I'm going to have to just pull an executive decision I think we're gonna go with the turkey and I'm going to start it off I have an idea of how to do it I want to pressure cook it so it just falls apart and then give it like crispy edges uh, shred it and stir fry it so it so not like pieces of turkey. We could just slice it up, I suppose, and use it that way. But I like the idea of kind of shredding it up and having little pieces of it. Um, not pieces, like little shreds of it in, in these things. I think that'll make a better, a nicer... Well, at least more interesting. I don't know. I don't know. Um, but that means we have to fire up the pressure cooker. So I guess that's what we're going to do. I guess that's what we're going to do. Um, so join me, won't you, on the countertop with my nylon board and my, I can't believe, 73 cents for a turkey thigh. It's just, it's just crazy. They must be trying to get rid of it. No, thank you for the follow. Wow. Welcome, welcome. So yeah, I don't know why I don't know why this is so so cheap. I don't know what they're doing uh, with it. I'm gonna take the skin off because I'm not planning on crisping up the skin, and it'll just get unpleasant. Um, 
if I pressure cook the skin without crisping it up. So we're just gonna we're just gonna pull it off. Um, We're not going to throw. It's not going to go to waste. I have a I have a plan for the skin as well. And uh, skin just pulls away pretty easily. There's a, only a few spots where it like really anchors down on a piece of poultry like this. Uh, so you can usually just do what I did here and. Uh, Grab it and yank it off. Uh, we're gonna get rid of that string. Otherwise, yeah, that's what I'm working with. That is now a skinless turkey thigh. We're gonna leave the bone in when we cook it because it's gonna fall off the bone when we're done. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna toss that little string. Uh, this part though, the skin, I have a plan. I'll show you in a sec. Uh, Just taking a look at it. Yeah, a nope, little piece of meat there. I don't want little pieces of meat on it because the way I want planning on cooking the skin will work better if there's just skin. Um, okay, so this this bit, we're going to grab the pot of our pressure pot, bring it on over. We're gonna. Get this guy out of the way. And we're gonna do this real basic. Um, Cause I can add flavor to it afterwards. So we're just gonna toss it in and we're gonna toss in some chicken stock. And we're gonna take the raw board here and get it away. I probably didn't need to wash it just then because I'm planning on cu cutting up that turkey skin. Um, but okay, whatever. Uh, rinse. Just give it a rinse. I need to wash my hands though. Okay. This guy, here he is. And honestly, I don't want a ton of liquid in here, but the pressure pot won't work with less than a cup of free liquid. And I find that it has a hard time pulling pressure at just one cup. So we're gonna give it a cup and a half of water because I have a stock concentrate we're gonna use. Uh, I think we're gonna go just with plain old chicken stock. Because I don't have turkey stock, I don't have any liquid stock, and my other options are fish and beef and tomato, and I don't really want any of those flavors in here. Oh my, there you go. That was a, let's see, we have a cup and a half of liquid in there. So we need one teaspoon. We need one and a half teaspoons. Where's my half teaspoon? So three of those, that's, that's not that much. And it will, dissolve as it boils the water. Honestly, it'll probably dissolve if I just stir it around a little bit. Yeah. So you want to flavor the water because the water is going to extract some flavor from the meat, and we don't want to completely bleed it out. We want the water to give something back to the meat. Um, Turkey is kind of a low flavor meat to begin with, so. That's the plan. Uh, so we're just gonna pop that in 
the fresher thing. Seal, uh, lock, lock, on. Grab my instructions, see if it's got something for turkey. Pressure cook. Turkey breast. This isn't a turkey breast. Chicken. Let's go with chicken thigh. High 20 minutes. Get that started. That's going to be the closest thing. Tur a whole turkey breast, which is six to eight pounds, which, is, which this is not that, would be a 50 minute pressure cook, which I'm sure is delicious and fall apart amazing when it's done, but we don't need that. Okay. You can't see the pressure cooker anyways. It's over. It's over there. As always, it's kind of, it's kind of, it's here. This is, this is it in front of the, the dish pit. Um, we'll have a fun, a fun pressure release a bit later. Uh, in the meantime, while that is pressure cooking up, I'm going to bring back my board, make sure I've rinsed the hand soap off. And I'm going to show you how I'm going to deal with this guy, the, uh, the skin here. I did this once on my own time with chicken skin and it worked great. Um, so I think we're going to do it here and it's a neat way to add texture now, the skin is a little bit on the tough side compared to the meat. So we're going to, I'm just going to work it into, try to work it, work it into thick strips, wide, wide-ish strips. or something along those lines. It can't be one big sheet is, is, is the point. Oh, it is easier to cut from the top for sure. Oh, okay. This is the gross part of of meat eating in general. Um, but also specifically of the of what I'm doing, handling the 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 chicken skin. Are these the right? I think these are going to be slightly too big for what I'm thinking. So I'm gonna. Split them that way. No, that one's the right size. That one's the right size. That one's the right size. And I think that one needs... No. That looks like a membrane I don't want. So we're going to get rid of that. And then we are going to split this guy the, the same way as well. We're going to attempt. Uh, okay. He's cut up. I do want a non stick for this. And I uh, don't want to wash my hands. I'm going to use my elbow. No, I'm going to use my 
elbow. <laughs> I guess I'm going to wash my hands because I can't get my elbow to grab the uh, handle there. And I'm not willing to fuss around with trying to get it out any other way. I'm just going to have to wash my hands again. Which is, honestly, good practice. Uh, you should always wash your hands whenever you handle raw meats, and especially whenever you handle raw poultry. Um, or raw reptile, amphibian, that sort of, those, those things as well are also known carriers of salmonella. Um, I want a nonstick because I'm afraid this is going to stick, but I want it to lay flat, so I'm going to have to use the big flat nonstick, which is not my most favoritest thing for this. Uh, and I want them to lay flat, flat, so I'm going to lay them in there when it's cold. Then I'll throw away the. Uh, We're going to lay these guys in here, stretched out flat. They are going to contract a bit as they heat. That's unavoidable, but I'd like to make them, give them as much of a head start as possible. Um, I, again, I did this once before, but I did it ages ago, and I don't remember exactly how I did it, except that the results were pretty good, but not amazing. And it was with chicken skins. And I know it was less fussy that time, so I'm hoping that the fuss here will help our end result. Uh, the skins tend to be a bit fatty, so that should help. You can see I'm leaving grease smears in the pan with my fingertips, or maybe you can't? It's tough to tell. Uh, I guess they barely show up on the camera. Uh, so we are basically making, we're treating these like strips of bacon. I'm going to start them in a cold pan. They're going to render in their own fat. And they're going to crisp up. And that's what we're doing. Um, and it's going to provide us with something that has a bit of texture. Because a pressure cooked piece of meat tends to be very soft and not have any sort of those crunchy bits. And I, you can't really, like I've done it where I've crisped up the, you can hear our pressure, it's just about there, um, where I've crisped up the skin and then thrown it in the pressure cooker and it, it kind of works, but the, the skin doesn't stay very nice. Um, upbeat duck. Hi. Yeah, I would do the skins in the, um, I could do the skins in the oven. I'm doing them here. I'm not looking for, I'm not sure what I'm looking for. Um, we do need to now give ourselves a full, proper, actual wash. Um, hi. Nice to meet you. So let's give this a full wash, because that should be the last thing I have to touch with uh, raw raw meat, raw poultry. So once we're uh, here, then I can stop washing my hands every two minutes. Um, So I, yeah, I, doing it in the oven might be easier. I don't really want to fire up the oven right today. Um, and I know that this works-ish. There's the beep for our uh, pressure cooker. 
I know that I know that doing it like this kind of works. I don't. I also know the uh, burner is not currently on because my hands were gross when I was over there. So I need to turn that on. Okay. Our pressure cooker beeped, which means it is up to pressure and is going to now pressure cook us for 20 minutes. During which we will prepare all the rest of stuff. Uh, I'm going to give the counter over here a wipe down with a uh, cleaning wipe as well. Because I'm sure there's uh, some, some turkey residue over here somewhere. And I'd rather... Be safe and sorry. Um, but yeah, I'm so I want little like crispy bits. Again, I did this ages ago, so maybe I'm just doing it the way I remember it out of habit. But I also have two recipes up, both from the walks of life today. Um, because we're going to try to make pad thai and kind of follow the pad thai recipe, although I don't have a bunch of these things, so we're going to make substitutions. Um, and then I want to try making spring rolls, and I actually pulled up a recipe for spring rolls that turns out to be fried spring rolls, which is not what I was thinking. Um, so maybe we need to find a different, uh, a different one for that. But I can, while the skins and everything are getting started, let's dry this off. Just start pulling out ingredients. Get all of my Mises Plast. Um, so I need number one, tamarind. Don't have any tamarind. Um, good place to start. Don't have the ingredient. I do have ketchup, which I know is not the right thing, but I also know that it is not completely off because it's tangy and fruity. Oh, actually, you know what I have? It's still ketchup, but it's banana ketchup. Which is tangy and fruity and less savory than tomato ketchup. Let's see, I need to... This is a sauce. We're doing one, one of these is a sauce and one of these is the stuff that goes in... Sauce. Okay, we're not doing the sauce in those guys. We're doing the sauce in a larger bowl because we have to combine multiple things. Ow. Yeah. Pinch my fingers on the little bowls there. Our turkey skins are shrinking up. These are going to go by relatively quick, so we're going to have to pay attention to them. And they will need to be flipped a few times. But you can see that they are readily rendering out the way bacon does. And that was something I noticed when I did it with chicken skins. Just by, um, I can't remember why I did it the first time. Um, I know I, it wasn't the same situation where I had pulled the skin off to do something else. Uh, so I'm going to let those guys keep frying. 
We're going to eyeball most of the ingredients here. Um, so this is my stand-in for tamarind. It is not the same thing. I also don't have brown sugar. I pulled it off the turkey. Obviously. Um, hi, welcome in. So, what we're working with today is the leftover spaghetti squash. Um, and I wasn't going to buy meat for, for this today. I was going to either use the shrimp or the tofu that I already had. Um, and I found a, a one pound turkey thigh for 73 cents. And it wasn't like a an error. They were all like that. I even commented on it to the, the workers at the the place at the grocery store. They must be clearing it out. It wasn't short dated either. It was just ridiculously cheap. They had big piles of ground turkey for a buck. They had um, like all sorts of turkey bits, just getting rid of them. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing they are unused frozen turkeys from Thanksgiving that are taking up space. So they have broken them down to sell as parts and they're just trying to get rid of them. Because I can't imagine where else they would have gotten a large quantity of excess turkey parts. Um, so I bought a 73 cent turkey thigh. Uh, figured I'd play with it today. I almost bought a pound of, or two pounds of turkey, uh, ground turkey for a buck. Um, but I wasn't sure what I was going to do with that. <laughs> I'm sure it won't last long. Um, that's molasses because I don't have any brown sugar. So we're just going to add molasses and regular sugar. Um, which is how you make brown sugar anyway. So Uh, I am actually out of sweet soy sauce as well, but sweet soy sauce is essentially brown sugar and soy sauce. So I'm just going to assume that the extra brown sugar I just, or the extra molasses I just added will make up for the difference. Um, I am just kind of winging it a bit. Probably gonna end up with more sauce than I need. Um, yes, it was a turkey bonanza, and I'm not I'm, I'm, I'm not clear on why. They are looking nice and brown, and we're getting a lot of fat rendered into the pan. I'm probably gonna end up using the fat. I didn't do these in a the pan I was I would use for anything else because I really wanted to make them lay flat if possible. Um, that bit's a bit, tiny bit too thick, I think. Um, they're probably done. They're golden on both sides. So I am going to pull them and turn them off. Um, uh, hang on. Things, everyone just talked in, in, in chat, and I'm over here, and not let me catch up. I don't want to burn these guys. Um, so we'll just hold on to those. Those are going to be an uh, interesting textural element. Let's see. Oh, an ad is on top of me. Let's see who's talking. Um, Upbeat Duck, you've been giving yourself lead way when winging it. Um, I say, I say wing it. I say wing it. Um... Making mistakes is part of doing it right, I think. Because as long as you learn from your mistakes. Uh, Mags is here. Hi, Mags. I don't put my soy sauce in the fridge because it's so salty. Um, it's not going to go off. I don't think the thing says... Oh, I dropped a chopstick. Hmm. 
Well, it says refrigerate after opening for quality. I don't think I've noticed that the quality drops. Um, a lot of things I think don't need to go in the fridge. Some things I have in the fridge just because they don't have because they're the wrong shape. Uh, I wouldn't normally keep fish sauce in the fridge. Oops. Because I don't think it needs to be refrigerated, even though it probably says. Oh, actually, it does. I, I explicitly does not say refrigerator. Oh, there it does. Tiny, tiny text. Um, um, but no, I don't refrigerate my soy sauce. And I wouldn't refrigerate my fish sauce, except that this, the bottle here is too tall for the shelf that I keep things on. So it would either have to live out on the countertop here. Oh, you guys are over there. Um, it, would have, it would either have to live out on the countertop here, or it can go in the, in the door of the fridge. Um, um, a lot of condiments will say refrigerator after opening. I know mustard says that. Mustard won't go bad on you. It might turn. It might change color. Putting things in the fridge can slow down oxidation, but a lot of stuff just a lot of these condiments have like things that are high in vinegar, things that are high in salt, oftentimes won't go bad. Uh, obviously, I'm not saying keep everything out, and. It's not like it hurts to put any of these things in the fridge. Um, this one wants white pepper, which I have and we're using. But I always feel a little bit weird about white pepper. And this is going to be our... Uh, pad Thai sauce. So I want to get the white pepper and the banana ketchup stirred in. Mm. And then the rest of that stuff is no cornstarch in there, is there? Mmm, we have tasty. We're going to set that aside. We're going to prep all of the uh, solid ingredients. Put them in little bowls because pad thai is a stir fry. So getting things, all the things ready before you need them is very important because you can't stop to go cut something very easily without burning something else. Um, Oh, there is cornstarch. I knew it. Well, the cornstarch is going to go directly in here because I think that that is a good hack. Um, the cornstarch is supposed to thicken the sauce. And what, and what these typically have you do is prepare a little bowl of uh, wetted cornstarch to add at the end to thicken the sauce. I... I'm just going to add it early. Uh, how much does it want? One teaspoon. That was too much. We're going to add it early. Since I got a bunch of liquid right there, there's water in there. That will hydrate my cornstarch just fine. Oh, we're going to need the peanuts, actually. I'll leave those out. Skip the sesame seeds this time. I had to pick up bean sprouts for this because I don't normally have bean sprouts around because they don't keep very long. They're not my favorite. So 
So we'll get the cornstarch here. Stirred in. I know this is not the proper procedure, but I think that mixing your cornstarch directly into your sauce when it's cold, especially a liquidy sauce like this, is a good hack and helps it thicken up when you get to that point. Um, we're going to prep the bits that need prepping separately. I'm actually going to have a use for my, uh, I pronounced this stuff wrong the last time I used it. Uh, it doesn't say it on here because it says it in English, but, um, I said bagoon, which is wrong. This is bagoong, which is spelled like bagoon, but it's pronounced like bagoong. This stuff is definitely wrong for a for a pad Thai. This stuff is not Thai at all. It's um, Indonesian. But I don't have the kind of shrimp that the pad Thai wants, so we're using this kind instead. You need quite a bit of it. We're going to fry it off at the beginning to infuse the entire thing with the flavor. Look! I don't know if you can see it. It doesn't focus that close. Um, you can see the little tiny eyes because they're little tiny brine shrimps. Mm. Cornstarch, water, shrimp, garlic. Garlic lives in the little garlic house now. Oops. My little garlic house. Uh, so far, it works. It contains the garlics as I believe it was always supposed to. Uh, so let's get these garlics. These are the last few cloves off of the old head. Um, as you can see, there's a brand new one in there um, in the little garlic house. And they peel real easy because they're kind of old. And so they, they shrink away from their skins just slightly. Um, oh, that's cute. Um, I, do I still have the box? I ran this one through its paces. Um, where did I put that little box? I don't know where I put the box. I saved the box. Uh, but that little garlic house came with this in a box, and this is the roaster. Uh, and you put a garlic in there, and you put the lid on it, and you roast it, and it actually worked really well, and we got a better garlic out of the little roaster than the one I did in the in just a wrapped in foil. So it really did work. I got it at a thrift store. They came in a, in a little bundle together. Um, and it came with this little garlic house, which uh, the holes are supposed to let it breathe so it doesn't get skunky in there. But nice. We all, yeah, we already ran that through. We'll probably use that at some point in the future. Um, the other, well, the other thing, anyone who's interested in roasting garlic will be excited about this, because the instructions on the box came with microwave directions for that little garlic the roaster, and we tried it out, and it's significantly worse than roasting them in the oven. I'm not going to lie about that. It's definitely not as good. But it only took one minute to cook them in the in the microwave, in the little pot, and they came out like roast garlics, like pasty and spreadable. They just didn't have the developed caramelized flavor that they get from a nice roast. Um, but if all you want is soft garlic real fast, bam, it did it, did it like it delivered. Our pressure cooker is done. So we're going to have the fun 
the fun part. Eh. Because this calls for a fast release. Exciting. So that's going to loudly hiss at me for a little bit, and we'll come back over here while it does. Um, these garlics want to be thinly sliced. Yeah, the um, doing it in the oven, actually roasting it, way better product. Um, it, you know, just takes a while. Uh, and what that little thing does is it helps regulate the, I think it helps regulate the humidity around the garlic so it doesn't dry out. So that you can roast it without worrying about it shriveling up. Um, but having it do it in the microwave that fast means if you just need something really quick, it's an option. And I don't know that I have another way to do that because I don't have a little microwave safe vessel that is vented like that. I could probably jury rig something up, but it's, and it was cheap. I got it at a thrift store, so it was super cheap. Um, so we've got shrimp, sliced garlic, bean sprout. Now I'm, the recipe I'm following is for a much larger quantity than I'm planning on making. So we're going to have to eyeball the bean sprouts, but I picked up some bean sprouts. Uh, we're going to use those in the spring roll as well. Um, more soy sauce, it says. I don't... Oh, because it wants to marinate the chicken. I see. I see what this is doing. Um, we're not doing the chicken that way, so we're going to ignore that bit. I don't have garlic chives, but I have some scallions. Um, they're a little dried up around the edges. They're not keeping quite as nicely. Um, so there'll be a little bit of a trim on these guys. Uh, we probably only need two of them. So we'll pick the nicest two. Oh, we're going to need a third one for the spring roll. So we'll grab the nicest three. Um, Cause there's going to be a little bit of, a little bit of loss from these, uh, gnarly bits. Um, Peanuts, mung greens, eggs. I'm going to cut that three down to, I want to say one. Because I think we're making a, a fraction of this. One big egg. Uh, oil for the frying. Salted radish or Chinese mustard stem. I have neither of those. But I can throw in some bok choy. Uh, which is not the same thing at all, but what are you going to do? Going to stop me? They're not going to stop me. Um, our turkey's done, so we unlock and open it and take a look at it. Let it cool off a little bit because it's going to be too hot to handle. Oh, and I'm going to... Clean up these uh, these scallions. We're going to cut the dried off bits away, and the little root rootlets. And the outer most layer of this guy has gotten really papery. I'm going to get rid of that too. You know what, we're going to cheat and split it all the way down so that I can grab the edge of that papery layer and just peel it away.
Okay, one. This one's going to be a lot easier because I can grab the dried up bit and pull it away. And this one should also be pretty easy for the same reason. Not quite as much of a handle, but we'll just, we'll just cut that little tip off. And then we're gonna lose about that much, and we lose about that much. The dried up bits will not be pleasant to use, so we just cut those away. And we're left with pretty good looking, pretty good looking scallions in the end. Um, we need two of them for the a bigger, bigger bowl to hold them. Two of them for the pad thai attempt, and the other one for the spring roll. Go yonder, the mung bean sprout. I think this is going to be a handful. I'm not going to measure it. This is going to be like a, a big pinch. Thai salted radish, preferred, or Chinese mustard stem. You can't find it. Zakai works well. What is this? What is Zakai? It's a preserved, okay, so it's a salted stem. It's a preserved vegetable. We have nothing like that. We have nothing even similar to that. Um, I don't think I've ever had that in a pad thai. This is like super authentic pad thai recipe. So I am just kind of ignoring some elements of it. Um, I apologize to Thailand. I don't know. Um, it sounds like I should use pickled ginger. Probably the closest thing I have. Do I have pickled ginger? I should have a little bit. Yeah, I do. Okay. Because it's like a preserve. That's not it. That's that's mapo sauce. Um. Do I have pickled ginger? Yes, I do. There it is. Pink pickled ginger is probably the closest thing I have. Uh, and I don't know how much to use. Some. Two tablespoons of the real thing. But I'm cutting the recipe down, so I'm just going to grab like a... about that much. Slice it up real thin. Call it good. It's probably going to be in the same, at least, realm. I'm sure I've offended someone's ancestors. Probably multiple people's ancestors. Hmm. And some eggs, which are going to go in their own bowl. Ungraded farm fresh eggs. We'll grab a. 
These are some of the biggest. Look at the size of these eggs. Some of these are some of the biggest eggs I've ever seen. Um, so we're going to grab a, I don't know, the first one. Biggish egg, not the biggest egg. Look at the size of this egg. That's why I get ungraded eggs. Sometimes you get gigantic eggs. You had pad thai today. <laughs> far from authentic. I mean, this was always going to be far from authentic because I don't have most of the ingredients. And also our noodles are this. Um, so, like the, the, the very premise I'm working with is inauthentic from the word go. Uh, and we're putting pressure cooked turkey in it. It's gonna be weird. It's gonna be weird. Um, let's get this stuff off of here. Um, marinade. Don't have to marinate. Don't have to soak. Don't have to prepare the. Don't prepare the shrimp. Oil. And do the chicken. So we're adding less oil because we're not having to fry off the chicken in the pan. Shrimp, garlic. Oh, we need a shallot, which I don't have, so we're going to use just a plain old onion. Um, this stuff is going to go in its own little dish. I, of course, could have found a less authentic recipe for this. I probably could have found one that is explicitly for spaghetti squash. Um, but we didn't. That's the thing we didn't do. I always consider the recipe a bit of an outline. Um, especially since I'm also cutting the recipe down by quite a bit. And I'm not measuring any of my cut downs. Um, anyways, we need to beat this egg though because it's going to be tossed in there. I should probably tell the pressure cooker to stop uh, doing anything. Okay. And that's all of the ingredients for an attempted pad thai, except I want to shred the turkey. Uh, come to me, turkey. Oh yeah, okay. It's it's not fall apart, fall apart, but it's tender. There you go. One piece of turkey thigh. There's a bone in there somewhere. I mean, there's a bone right there. So let's grab a fork to help me. Probably could have left it in there for five minutes more. Um, I used the chicken thigh time on it, and this is obviously a bigger piece. Ooh, it's really hot on the inside, though. It does break apart pretty easily. We're gonna taste it. Mmm. Mmm. Nice and tender. 
not dried out. Good stuff. Jovial approved. Ow. It's hot. That's why I got the fork, because I knew it would be too hot to just dive in. But I want to get it all away from this bone. Ow. 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 <laughs> I think we're going to sacrifice a little bit of this meat just because I don't want to fight with the gnarly bit at the end here. So we're just going to call that close enough. rather than risk getting chunks of cartilage in our uh, finished result. Well, I actually think that we might have a chunk of cartilage here. Yeah, we definitely have a chunk of cartilage there. Um, so we'll, we'll meet it halfway. Get rid of the meat. Ow. 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 <laughs> Close enough. Some of these bits just come apart really easy. That's why I think it could have stood just just a couple minutes more. I think we were very close to it being just absolute fall apart. Um, and it's just because it's a lar it was such a much larger piece. It's <laughs> it's really hot. <laughs> it hurts my little fingies. Okay. Turkey chunks. Mm. Tasty turkey chunks. Let's see. Tell the pressure cooker to stop. Bye. We have a broth in there as well, which we could use for something. Be a shame to let that go to waste, but I don't really want to save it, so I'd have to use it for something here and now. Mm. Mm. I might go back tomorrow and get another one of those 70 cent turkey thighs and do something like this with it again, just to, because why the heck not? It's delicious. Um, maybe not handle it when it's screaming hot next time. Mm. Getting it off the bone and cutting it up makes it cool faster. So there is a there is a benefit to it. Not sure it's worth the pain, but correct. I can burn my mouth later with the best of them. Uh, why am I walking away with that part? That part lives here. It's this part that goes with me. Okay, our pad thai ingredients are ready. We need to portion the noodle part out because some of it's being saved because I want to try making a spring roll. Um, they're still nice and stringy. I think we have potential. I also need to get in here. Remember, I didn't break these up because they were blazing hot when I... Uh, handled them the first time, so I just kind of wung it, 
but they really need to be broken up into their strands. So. So we're doing that now when they're cold. Uh, I think ultimately we did cook it enough. It's it's still a little al dente, um, but it comes apart pretty easily with just gentle finger pressure. It's just that they were so hot I couldn't pull it apart, and it's just got a s slight resistance to it, so the, the fork kind of wanted to tear through it instead of breaking it apart. And it just... Need to get through it and find all the big chunks. We might come back to visit spaghetti squash in the future in spaghetti squash season. Like I said, this one was, was given to me. I actually don't know where it came from originally. Um, Raya, hi! Welcome, welcome. Well, what you've missed is I'm following up on your idea, and I've been prepping all of the ingredients for a pad thai. And I just, we just got every. This is the last thing is was making sure I got rid of all the big chunks um, out of the leftover spaghetti squash. We pressure cooked a turkey thigh, which I got for 73 cents, not on clearance sale. Um, that's it there. I've divided our spaghetti squash into two parts because I want to try making a spring roll as well, um, which requires some slightly different ingredients but not entirely different, so we're gonna leverage what we've got here to make both things. Um, spring rolls are much easier to do, too, because it's just wet the thing, put all the stuff ingredients, and, and fold it. Um, so, sp leftover spaghetti squash divided, pressure cooked turkey. This is our pad thai sauce. I don't have dried shrimp, so I'm using bago ong. Uh, garlic, scallion, Crispy turkey skin for the spring rolls. I think this is going to add some fun texture. I don't have whatever this stuff is called. Um, preserved Thai salted radish or Chinese mustard stem or zakai. I don't have any of those things. So what I have here is pickled ginger. Uh, Egg, peanut, bean sprouts. We need to chop the peanuts. I just remembered that. Um, how am I going to chop the peanuts efficiently? I'm going to too many peanuts. Not chop the peanuts, but Lightly crush the peanuts. There. Chopped. I don't know, and I'm not making lumpia today, so that'll be a test for a different day, but I can't, Im I mean, I don't know if it's going to work in a spring roll at the moment. Um, you you intrigued me with your uh, speculation, and I'm, we're giving it a go. I don't have lumpia skins to experiment with. I have rice paper for spring rolls. Um... But I can't imagine it would be bad. 
uh, it's not going to break down weird any weirdly in the frying process unless it completely disintegrates when we're making pad thai here today now that i suppose could happen and if it does then we'll know that this is a disaster again this is this is an experiment we're working with an, we're working with the uh the experiment here we're gonna pour my extra turkey drippings in to the wok to get us started. Set that, set that guy aside. Um, so I, I'll give you a verdict on that after we've tested this out a little bit. Um, come over here. We're going to kill this grapeseed oil because there's just a little bit left in there. Is that enough oil? There's supposed to be quite a bit of oil in a pad thai. Um, that's probably enough to get us started at least. I'll add more if we need it. Um, heat the oil. Get a pusher ready. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, I'm just following some. We're, we're going to do it. Uh, yeah, and we should open the bean sprouts because I'm going to need to eat, add those when it's hot at the end. I like bean sprouts. I just don't get them because I never use them fast enough and I end up throwing away part of the package because they go off real quick. Um, but I like them. So I wish they didn't go off so fast so that I could use them more. We probably should have made the spring. Hold on. I haven't started yet. We should probably make the spring roll first, right? Because the spring rolls aren't hot. They're going to be cold rice paper spring rolls. Since, so since they're not hot, they can be wee former. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much for the prime sum. I still have not extracted that sound bite for that. Um, I'm putting our, oops, that is the wrong scene. I'm putting our pad thai on hold. We're going to push all the ingredients to the side because I think it is just wise to do the spring rolls first. So I'm just going to take all of our ingredients and push them to the side. That's the one for the spring roll. This is our sauce. I can actually put some of these things over on the stove because I don't need them over here at all. And I'll save some space. Um, I mean, I, I'll keep talking. If I go suddenly silent, it probably means I've died. Uh, in which case... Report me to Twitch, because you're not allowed to die on, on stream. Um, but lurkers are always appreciated. Never, never, never fear about that. Um, <laughs> Chinese spirits here too. Hi. Uh, so I've, we divided this. I'm going to use this part for the pad thai. So we're going to use this part for, to, to, attempt, to attempt some spring rolls. Make sure all of our heat's off over here. So for spring rolls, I need to do all that again, except easier. 
because there's fewer things to do. We have the bean sprouts. We want the cutting board back. Uh, fortunately, I washed this guy after we had the, the raw meat on it, so I can use it immediately here. Um, anyways, hi, Weformer. Hi, Shining Spear. Welcome, welcome. Cutting this one much thinner. Even though I've seen spring rolls with the the long tails of the of these guys sticking out the ends, I hate that. I'd rather have little little bits and not have to bite through them and risk pulling out big long streamers of onion. Um, that. We could potentially throw some jalapeno in our pad thai as well, as there's no spicy element in the pad thai at the moment. Although I don't think you're supposed to have a spicy element in your pad thai. I often like to add some hot pepper oil at the end. This, by the way, is my best knife. <laughs> I love this knife. Um, it's so... It's so sharp, it holds an edge so well. Um, have I ever considered setting up a throne? I have, and then I have followed that up by not even looking into it. Um, I really should. I should also probably, because I set up a Patreon and a, Kof, a Kofi and um, something else, and then I never enabled them or linked to them. <laughs> um, um, so I have indeed considered these things and then just kind of not followed up like a fool. Um, but yes, thank you. Good question. Save the other half of that. Carrots, meat. What else goes in a, uh, uh, a fresh spring roll. Aside from carrots, which I just said, which I'm going to now uh, prep a carrot. I think that's it. You can see my... Uh, one of my slightly furry carrots again. It's slightly furry. <laughs> well, I will uh, take it under advisement. long carrot. So we're going to we're going to scrape the skin to get rid of those little the little rootlets which are fully edible. I just don't want the appearance of the little rootlets in my finished in my finished dish. Could have done that with a peeler, but you actually shave off way less skin this way by doing it with the edge of a knife. Uh, 
I might throw some carrots in our pad thai as well, because I think I'm going to annihilate this carrot with a, uh, the box grater. Rather than julienne it by hand, because that's tedious and gives you just as good a result as doing it this way. Not as much as I thought. There you go. Okay. Um, I guess I'll snack on that that bit. Okay. Carrot. I think that's all the ingredients I would put in a spring roll. We're going to need a dipping sauce, which is going to be really easy. We're going to get orange smears everywhere. Okay, okay, okay. Keep getting distracted. Keep getting distracted. I really need to set up that whole uh, that whole below the below the panel thing down there. The um, all the little the little widget things, because then I wouldn't have to manually link to my Discord, which we're going to do, and we're going to do correctly this time, and not link to. Uh... Uh, private spaces, but like I could put a link down there instead of here. That'd be neat, right? <laughs> okay. Get out the rice paper. Oop. Get out the rice paper. Get out a pie dish that is at least as big as the rice paper. Ooh, actually, we're going to use the pizza pan for this, um, weirdly enough. We're just going to run some hot water with the sink. We're just going to run some hot water with the sink, put it here in this in this here pizza pan. Be our spot for soaking these uh, these rice papers, which are going to get propped in the back where you can't see them. This one's broken. Okay, our first paper is soaking. I'm just gonna whip up a sauce. with no recipe. We're just going to whip up a sauce with no recipe. Some vinegar. My rice paper is doing a weird thing that you can't see because it's off the side of the, of the camera. It has curled up immediately. Don't curl up. That was strange. It curled up like a scroll. Uh, that is some rice rice vinegar. This is some one hundred percent. Peanut butter. Mm, 
It tastes like peanutty goodness. Uh, ingredients, peanuts. Uh, it doesn't even have salt in it. We're going to have to add some salt. We've added some salt. We're going to have to add some flavor. This is seasoning. It improves the taste. That's a weirdly literal uh, description. Love that stuff. This oil is much less hot than you think it is. Um, so we add a bunch of that. We finally whisk this together. We see if it combines. It does not really want to. It actually needs more peanut butter. Uncle Stinky! Hi! Is peanut butter a condiment? Peanut butter is a condiment. going to turn this into a smooth paste. And then we're going to taste it. And then we're going to start assembling spring rolls. And then we're going to add bunch of sriracha to that. A bit of garlic powder, some black pepper. Peanut butter and honey do mix, but we're not making that. I don't want this to be a sweet thing. This is supposed to be a spicy, savory, creamy thing. Mmm. Ooh. Yeah, okay. So making a sauce like this is super easy. You just do what I did. You want something fatty, which we've got peanut butter. You want something spicy. You want something salty. We've got soy sauce. We've got two things spicy, actually. Um, you want something savory. The soy sauce is the main driver of that, but the seasoning, this stuff, is essentially purified uh, uh, umami derived from wheat. So it's not, it's not gluten-free, but it uh, is very savory tasty. And you want something sweet. We don't want too much sweet. So we actually, we need, you're right. We do need to add a little bit of sweet. I'm going to add... a little dollop of golden syrup, which is cane sugar syrup. But you're right, it needed, it needed, it needed something sweet. Um, and then you just kind of have those ingredients and you add them to the thing in bits until you've arrived at your balanced point. And you can add a few other things. I added garlic powder, black pepper to this one. Mm. That's going to be very nice on our finished dish, though. And I'm going to build the spring rolls right here. Hopefully this wrapper has not gotten too soft. 
it very much has. I put my finger through it just by picking it up. So our first one might be a bit of a mess because I soaked it too long and it tore right there. And yeah, I'm doing them directly on the on the tabletop here. This will also be a test of how big I should make these. This one might end up being too small, but it might end up being too big. Our, our crispy turkey skin from the very beginning and some bean sprout. I think I oversoaked this one, so we'll we'll find out in a sec if this even holds together. It might explode. The bean sprout punctured the side. Okay. We oversoaked that that wrapper for sure. It still kind of holds. The next one's going to be better. Part two, fresh wrapper, no holes in this one to start with. And we just, you just don't need to soak the heck out of it. It just needs to soften up so it's pliable. Which it does faster in warm water and my water has cooled off. But ultimately, I think the size was just about right. I need to make it more log-shaped, less uh, burrito-shaped. Okay, this guy, I think, is the right level of pliability, but still has some sturdiness. So we'll take some of our spagoot. We'll take some of our carrot, take some of our scallion, our hot peppers, our bean sprouts, try to get them lengthwise so they don't risk puncturing the uh, paper. Some more of our Turkey skin bacon for texture. And a little bit more of our actual turkey meat for meatiness. I should also be able to squeeze this one a little bit harder because the uh, the uh, rice paper isn't quite so delicate because I didn't over soak it. We fold it over, fold the ends in, fold it over. Yeah, a spring roll with uh, that stuff in it. That one looks much nicer than the first one. The first one looks like a mess. The first one offends me deeply. Uh, we're going to do... Two more, I think, is the correct amount for the amount of this I have. And then we will fire up the oil, make the pad thai, and then we'll taste everything. Uh, I can't believe I almost did the pad thai first. That would have been weird. We have an ad right now. Good time for it, because I'm just kind of doing something slow and uninteresting. Uh, using the pizza pan actually is super easy compared to the last time I did this where I had a bowl. 
because I can actually lay the rice paper here. You can probably can't even see the rice paper in there, but you can. Sure, you can. You can just lay it flat, and it fully as long as you push it down. So the first one curled, I think, because I didn't push it down, and it was floating on top of the water. So the underside hydrated faster than the top, and it curled up. that some beans some turkey bits some crispy bits Wrap it up and go. Get it tucked in real nice. Fold over the end and the other end. Bring the top over the top. Mine aren't nearly as tight as you'd get them in a professional kitchen, but uh, they're definitely holding. We aren't losing them. Okay, one more. Last one. I should put, I should have put the uh, the next wrapper in while I was building this one, because that's about the time it takes me to, to put all the ingredients in there, the amount of time it takes to soak. Let's see, I don't need this skillet out and it's clean so I can put it away. Um, welcome back from the ad, anyone who was on the ad. We are on the final roll. The second one is my best one, easily. The first one is the worst one. As the old rhyme goes, first is the worst, second is the best. And then the rhyme changes depending on where you're from for the third one. Um, okay, that stuff, this stuff, by this stuff I mean carrot, and by that stuff I mean Spaghetti squash, scallion, jalapenos, bean sprouts. I imagine there's going to be nothing wrong here. The uh, our experience with the um, spaghetti squash on Friday was that it was a very blank slate, and it's just going to sort of provide a textural element. I hope it's not too similar to the other vegetables. That would be the uh, the shame bit, as if uh, our last few bits of crispy skin. One of these pieces of skin, it was the thick one, didn't come out crispy. It came out really kind of flabby, and I don't, I don't, I'm not going to use that one. I don't want flabby skin in my uh, rolls. I want them nice and crispy. And most of them came out perfect. There's just that one, just that one. Uh, the turkey is also really well cooked. It's very easy to just break it apart with my fingers. Okay. Final one. Roll it over. Tuck it in. Tuck in the end. 
tuck in the other end, floop the top, tuck it under, call it good enough. Move the, the gross one away. Okay, that, that was pretty good. We can end up with that many. They look, they're not real tight. They're a little bit airy, um, which is not ideal, but in this case, it's not a deal breaker. It's not a big problem because we're not cooking these any further. They're just gonna sit there like this. Um, so the only thing it'll be is that they'll kind of they'll kind of flop a little bit when you uh, pick them up because they're not real snug. Um, okay, that means. They, and, they, and they can sit and rest indefinitely because they are served like that cold uh, with the sauce we made. So we'll taste that at the end. I'm going to get rid of this wet pizza pan before I spill a bunch of water on everything. But that means we are over here on the stove ready to rock. I'm bringing the carrots over. We're going to use up the remaining shredded carrots and the remaining jalapenos because I don't want either of those things to go to waste and the turkey bits can come over here too. Oh, and the bean sprouts. Everything over here handy, ready to go, so I can just grab stuff and throw it in as we need it. I think we need a scooch more oil. You're supposed to start with more than you think. So we're just gonna add a little bit more. Because the end result is pretty oily and the starched, the starch helps sort of pull it together at the end. Um, okay, ready to cook, make it hot. While that's heating up, I'm going to wipe down my countertop. Oh, it got dark. It's that time of year when it's when I start, it's still light. And then it gets dark. So I forget to turn the light on in the other room there. So when I go around the corner, it's dark. Uh, this seems like a lot of ingredients for this small wok, so we'll see if this even works. Maybe I should do it in the big wok and just do a smaller, a smaller quantity of it. I feel like I'm going to fill up this wok. It's a good time for it too. We've got a lot of time for the next ad, so it won't be running into that. Oh, I need a place to serve it because once it's ready, it's got to come out of there and be served immediately. So, because if it sits sits in the pan, it'll start, it'll uh, go gummy. So we got to get a plate ready for it. I don't know if it'll go gummy because we're not using noodles. If it was actually noodles, that would go gummy on me. Uh, I've got my recipe pulled up. We're skipping the part where we cook the chicken because our chicken is already cooked because it's pressure cooked turkey. Um, hot oil and our pusher. Okay, the oil's not hot. But this stuff will start to fry as the oil heats up. So it'll get us started. And it'll let me know when the oil is hot. Okay, well, um, 
Now we play the waiting game. Um, let's see. So what we're going to do, we're frying the shrimp. This is supposed to be powdered dry shrimp, which I don't have. So we're using bagoong, wet bagoong. So this is going to fry weird. Um, but I'm going to let this stuff pre-fry before I add anything else. Um, and then we're going to add the garlic. Then we're going to, oh, an onion. Almost forgot. We do need an onion. Um, for this. I almost completely biffed that. I'm going to just really quickly grab an existing knife, grab an existing board, and uh, slice an onion. Good thing I was reading ahead and realized that I didn't pack a normal onion. I even called out an onion earlier, and I just didn't do it. Okay, we will uh, deal with onion scraps on my own time. Okay. That stuff's frying up really nice. So the pink is um artificial color. The stuff stand comes standard with the artificial color in it. Uh, uh, I don't know why they love their artificial colors in Indonesia. Uh, onion. Uh, so we're going to let this stuff really, really fry up. We're going to let this stuff really fry up uh, to get us started. Um, Um, yeah, and then we're adding things basically one at a time. Sauce and the noodles. Okay, yep. It has times on it, but since some of our ingredients aren't the right ingredients, I don't know that we can follow them real accurately. We're slowing down here, so I'm going to go ahead and move on. Start our garlic. It won't take long. Move on to our onion. And it says add the pickled uh, radish, which we don't have. Um, so I'm adding my pickled sushi ginger.
Uh, we're not using a silicone spatula for this because you're not supposed to use a silicone spatula in high heat where it sits in the in the stuff a lot. Um, silicone is heat stable up to it's probably technically heat stable up to 500, but they say that you shouldn't go over 450 with it because there's a risk of overheating. Um, whereas wood is heat safe up to the flash point of wood, um, which is extremely hot. Um, someone can probably look up the flash point of wood. Um, add the noodle, which in this case is our squash, and the sauce, which I'm going to run my finger through to make sure that the cornstarch is incorporated. Oh, I was going to, okay, we're going to, we're going to briefly pause. We're going to throw in all my remaining carrot and all my remaining hot pepper, just because I want to use those up. We're going to stir this around, and then we're going to throw the sauce in. Whenever you add cornstarch to a, a water for the purposes of thickening, it'll try to settle. So just before you throw it in, so just before you throw it in, kind of run your finger through it to ensure it's not, and then just throw it in. Okay. Now our plan is to cook out most of the liquid on a hotter heat. We're definitely not going to have the long, long strand uh, noodles like you get in a real pad thai. Probably should have done this in the bigger wok now that we get to this stage. I think it would have worked better. Because I think we're going to boil it for a little while at this, at doing it this way which is less than ideal. Um, but we've got it hot, so we can try to push that liquid off of there and get it thickened up to the point where... It needs to be thickened up to the point where I can push it away from the middle and it'll stay. When does the chicken go in? Um, chicken goes in at the very, very end because they assume you've pre-cooked it as well. Um, Just gonna break up some of the bigger chunks since now it's cool enough to handle quite easily. Um, also, thank you for looking that up, Rayuya. Um, We are going to have to keep stirring this, even though it looks kind of like just boiling a soup. Because it's going to want to try to stick at the bottom, for sure. But that should help us... Trying to guesstimate that this is going to be way the wrong color. Um, this is going to be way the wrong color for a, a pad thai. Uh, it's going to be much, much darker. 
and you're not going to be able to see the noodles. Uh, so our um, our spaghetti squash strands are definitely not holding together really well. And also, we have way too much liquid in this in this uh, wok. Way too much liquid in this wok. Um, nice. If you don't mind my asking, what'd you make? Way too much liquid in this wok. This is this is not this is not what this is supposed to be like, and it's going to be in the heat too long because as a result. I'm chalking this up to me not knowing enough about pad thai and having my proportions all wrong. Um. We really, I've got it on, I've got it on high, high. We really need to get that liquid off of there. Um, which means I need to. Keep stirring or I'm going to burn it. Well, we're making a mess is what we're doing. Come on, it's just so gloopy. It's so gloopy that it, it falls back to the middle. We need we need to get it to the point where I can pull it up the sides and there's a little blank spot in the middle so I can do the egg. But we're not even close to that and we're not gonna have any kind of noodle when we're done with this. Um, there's already a slurry in there. There's already a cornstarch slurry in there. I think it's causing extra moisture to express from the spaghetti squash. We also had way more sauce than I needed for the amount of, of spaghetti squash noodles I had. Us big root, rotini, cheese, chicken, tomato sauce, an egg, more egg, cheese, bacon, breakfast sandwich. Is that one thing? Um, I cannot call this a pad thai in good in good conscience. I don't know what we've made here. I mean, I can add our meat to it. Maybe that'll help. I, I almost want to grab the bigger wok and just... Because oh. the trouble is, it's just too, it's too deep. This guy. Because then I can make a space in the middle and put our egg in there. Okay. I did mention early on, I was thinking, this might be too much for this walk. Cybertrans, hi. So, uh, yeah, we're... Uh, Pulling an audible, switching walks mid-cook, because, Jesus, that was just not working. It was much too... It 
It was much too deep, and it was was causing me to be in there. The section with just the noodles and the sauce should only have been in there for like a minute. And I just couldn't get rid of the liquid fast enough. And I just couldn't get rid of the liquid fast enough. So we, uh, we definitely should have started with the big walk. Well, I don't want to serve it on noodles. It contains the noodles. Plus, then we'd be preparing another thing. The whole idea here was to test if the spaghetti squash can be used as the noodles. And I think if we hadn't screwed it up, it might have worked. Um, and yes, I said we. I'm getting a silicone thing out so I can do a scrape. Okay, I am not prepared to say that this didn't work. I will chalk this one up to user error. This walk, remember we've had we've had trouble with this walk in the past. This walk has turned its life around and is doing a pretty good job these days. Um, they might have been too wet, but I think ultimately the problem was that that walk, the small walk was too narrow, so we couldn't get the surface area to really cook off the um, to cook off the liquid when we got that far. So this stuff is going to look more like a pile of goo because we've definitely lost our noodles. Um, the flavors are all going to be there. Now I have two walks to clean. Um, now I have two walks to clean today. Great. Well, there you go. I've seen worse plates of food. It wants some fresh scallions, um, honestly, to make the top look nicer because our scallions kind of got lost in there because of the way I. Uh, I bet it's I bet it's blazing hot. Uh, you're right. I bet it is absolutely hot. It looks better with the peanuts on it. It looks better on the plate too. Um, I can't, I can't in good conscience call it a pad thai. I don't think it's even possible to eat with chopsticks. It seems like it's too gloomy. I almost want a spoon, but I'm going to use a fork. Um, okay. Um, that's all the spaghetti squash, so we can't try this again right away. But let's put a pin in this. Remember that this was something we wanted to try out. And the next time I have a spaghetti squash, we will attempt to give it a, a go. Um, I'm going to take photos. This is too hot to eat. So I'm going to take photos of all of these guys. And then we'll come back. We'll do a tasting. We'll move my dry lemongrass out of the way so we don't have that in our photo. Nobody wants to see me drying lemongrass. Gross. Uh, I'm taking a photo of this. It doesn't look the most appealing in the world. I'm going to, I'm not going to lie. This isn't, I imagine it's going to taste great. Because um, how could it not? Uh, all the things in it are delicious. Come on. No, I just want... Camera, I just want regular photos. I don't want any of these fancy photo modes. Just regular, regular old photos. Okay, this guy comes back. 
we uh, take an awkward picture of our spring rolls. I'm going to take the really gloopy one off of there because it doesn't look very good. And we'll take those photos of just the nice ooh, with the um, with the peanut dip with the sauce with the sauce. You guys can hold on to this one because I don't think that one looks good enough for the uh, the photo op. It's always the awkward part where I leave leave the room and I stop talking so that I'm both quiet and invisible. Okay, coming back. For real. Who made two things? I made two dishes. Um, yeah, I'm curious how it tastes too. Uh, which is the part of the tay we are currently at. Let me swatch off my recipes. We are oh, we have an ad in progress. I will wait out the ad before I do tasting. I love when an ad comes up during photo time because then I'm, nobody's missing anything. Um, I think I, I think I concocted too much sauce for this and that's part of the problem. Weirdly enough, one of my things says we have an ad in progress and two of my things say we don't. So I bet you the ad ended 30 seconds ago. Um, and the witch's timers are all just dumb. Okay, let's give this thing a taste. Uh, it came out real brown. And you can't see the strands of the spaghetti squash in it anymore. It does not taste like pad thai. It's a little bit too salty. And I'll tell you what I'm tasting. The thing that's kind of cutting through it all is our bago ong. I should have added less bago ong. Bago ong is a strong flavor. It's not ruining it, but it's noticeable. Um, just a dab of that next time. We will make a note of just a dab of that next time. It's a pretty strong thing. Um, otherwise, we don't have the texture of pad thai. And it's a bit too much. We definitely made too much sauce. I, I think that's one of the things I should have measured more. <laughs> I was winging it a little bit too hard, and I made a too large of a batch of sauce. Which meant that I couldn't cook the liquid off in the wok. And meant that we had a... Because the sauce is most of the salt, so we had more salt than the amount of noodles. So it's a little bit salty. Um, not, not a complete deal breaker, but I'm going to have to have a glass of water with this one. It's good flavor overall. It's sort of generically savory. All of our elements have melded, except for the turkey. When you bite into a piece of turkey, you get a piece of turkey, very noticeable, which is nice. The turkey also has a textural difference from the rest of it. Since it was in the wok for a little bit, for a little while there, and kind of boiled in itself. We lost any kind of texture from the squash. The squash almost turned into like a thick sauce that's sort of encompassing everything else in there. Um, Cause I, I, probably, I could probably find a strand if I really had to, but it's kind of all merged together into this thick, thick savory sauce. 
The bean sprouts also have a little bit of texture. The green onions also have a little bit of texture. Again, since we ended up boiling it for a couple of minutes, I think we lost the texture on the sliced white onion. Mm. Well, you're right, Ryuya. You are correct. When I put it in, I was only intending the entire cook to take another maybe two minutes. But there, I couldn't get the liquid to cook off. It was only supposed to be in there. Like, from the point I put the squash in, we were supposed to have it on the plate within two minutes. Um, so... You are correct, but I screwed it up and couldn't, because the egg only needs to cook for under a minute, then you just break it up. Um, I couldn't get the liquid to seize up enough to make room for the egg, because you don't want to boil the egg. The egg's supposed to hit the bottom of the pan and fry, so you get little scrambled egg curds in there. So, yeah, it's tasty. It is a... Again, it's a it's a scooch too salty. Um, now I know a couple of things. Use the large wok. Number one, use the large wok so you've got room to move to maneuver. Make less sauce or make more noodle. One of the others, probably. I'm not sure. We'll find out. Anyways, that's only half of what we made today, and the other half might actually be the bigger success because I didn't screw this one up. Uh, the spring rolls. Obviously, we got the fat one there that uh, I rolled the wrong way. Um, but let's give one of these guys a go. Mmm. Mmm. That works great. The, um, the spaghetti squash in here is just like blank, blank texture. It's, but it's got a texture that's similar enough to cooked rice vermicelli, but with just a little bit of that sort of, it's, it's, it's wetter. I think that might be what happened in the pan too. The spaghetti squash itself is wetter, so it has sort of a vegetable freshness to it that noodles don't have. If I had wrapped these a little bit tighter, they'd be easier to handle. The, the texture-wise and, flav and flavor-wise, it's contributing nothing because it doesn't taste like anything, and frankly, that's what the rice noodles do, too. They're there for bulk and texture. Um, and texture-wise, it uh, is spot on to what I want in a uh, spring roll. I actually really like the turkey in here as well. Um, it's not normal, and it's definitely unusual. I think you normally have pork in a spring roll like this. Mm. Mm. But the spaghetti squash works really well in here. This one's a winner. This one's a winner. Our peanut sauce might be a scooch too thick, but... Possibly, but I think the solution is... 
I think the easiest solution is less sauce, bigger pan, so that it doesn't run the risk of sitting in its own juices like that. Rather than another cooking step on the on the squash, I think I think it's just a matter of we needed more surface area to push the liquid away because you can throw a wet ingredient into a wok, into a hot wok, and it won't just go soggy because the wok should have enough surface area to push the water away as it expresses from your ingredient. And I bet you the squash could have done that in the small wok if I hadn't added the sauce. But, but the combination of that amount of sauce I think threw I think threw us off. I think Again, I blame user error. I don't think we need to massively change our plans. I think we just need to use the correct tool and fix the proportions. Uh, this is great though. This is um this is real nice. And it's probably a lot healthier than doing this with uh, rice noodles. Since these things already are covered in rice noodle. That's what rice paper is. It's essentially a rice noodle that's a big circle instead of long little strands. Hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. This stuff is on point. I gotta sit here and keep eating it. Um, it's very similar to any spring roll you've had. It's a bunch of fresh, bright, vegetable-y flavors balanced off with this sauce. I mean, a spring roll without the sauce is kind of uninteresting. It's fresh and bright and vegetable-y. Our sauce here is a little bit too thick. I end up having to like scrape into it. I I actually think I should add a little bit of water to the sauce just to make it like a tiny bit thinner because I want to be able to dip. I don't want to have to scoop the sauce. So let's uh, do that real quick. then it's a more of a more of a runny sauce so you can dip something like this in there because these are a little bit too delicate to be like scraping into the into the the sauce bowl with and the sauce is richly flavored enough to, to, to stand a little bit of dilution um, and then I can just go dip and I get nice and saucy mmm well I think we have proof of concept. The spaghetti squash is definitely less durable than rice noodles. So you have to be a little more careful with it. Honestly, if I had done rice noodles in that thing we just did, they would also have turned into a blob. That was user error, not the fault of the squash. But there definitely are a little more, they're a little more delicate. So you, something like this, they're great. I bet you they would work in the fried versions as well, in egg rolls and lumpia. Because those things aren't in the heat for very long when you're frying them. And I think that our squash would hold up, but I would, Keep an eye on them because the squash is 
fairly moist, and frying something with a lot of water can cause ruptures. Uh, I'm going to throw away this one last piece of turkey skin because that one was the one that was kind of squidgy. The turkey skin, you can hardly taste it, but when you hit a piece of it in these guys, it has a nice snap, a nice crunch to it, which is a fun texture. I don't know that it's necessarily needed, and I definitely wouldn't go out of my way for it, but I had the skin on hand, and I wasn't going to save it, so we did that. Uh, anyways, yeah, so we have one... It's tasty, but it has issues, but I can see where the issues are. And one just all-around success. This this is an all-around success. Um, except I'm not very good at wrapping them. Oh, excuse me. Oop, I just tapped the mic. I hope it didn't deafen everyone. Um, I'm not very good at wrapping spring rolls, so that's the issue here. Um, yeah, I guess that's our show today. Oh, we ended up running the full time. I thought we, I did two things because I was sure I was going to run short. Um, because we had pre, I could, I could have done the tofu version of this. I didn't do the tofu version because I was sure that that wouldn't take long enough. And also because I found the super cheap turkey and I wanted to do the super cheap turkey. Um, Same thing but with fried tofu slabs in the uh, spring rolls and little tofu chunks in here. Um, imagine that. Just picture that. Next time we'll probably do tofu because I won't have an unusual 73 cent turkey thigh. Uh, just comes out of nowhere and says, hey, cook me. Um, I, I did cook a lot today. We ended up making two things. I normally only make one thing, and if I make two things, I make small portions of them. This is two full portions. I guess we'll probably save two spring rolls and see how they hold up long you know, in overnight storage and eat them tomorrow. And then I'll polish that off because I don't think that's gonna I don't think that's gonna get any better sitting around. I think it's gonna sog together. These are actually good complements to each other because this stuff ended up too a little bit too salty. And these guys, without the sauce, are very light and fresh. So they kind of they kind of even out between the two of them. Um, anyways, uh, yeah. I think that's our show. Thanks for being here. Um, pop back to my, to my face. Hi. Howdy. I mean, I have tofu. I literally have it here. Um... It's one of the things I keep. It's one of the things I keep around, um, and I was gonna use it today here for this stuff. Except when I was out shopping, I found a turkey thigh for seventy-three cents. I guess we'll use that. Um, I have made. I made mapo tofu here on the show once, and that was a lot of fun. That's a delicious. That is a delicious dish. Um, um, yeah, let's, since I've already said that we're wrapping up, people are leaving, <laughs> let's raid out before they all disappear. Um, last few times I have raided the same people, and I want to see if there's somebody different up and about. We always raid LaFay. Um... What's Jim up to? Jim's got his kid. How long has Jim been on? I think we're going to raid Jim real quick because he's on and uh, he's doing Legos. I know Jim's not usually on this time, so I'm going to take advantage and throw you all over to Jim before he disappears. Uh, he's been building Legos. He likes building Legos. I like building Legos. Um, 
I just don't get to do it very often because Legos are expensive. Um, so yeah, we're gonna go say Jim. We're gonna go see Jim real quick because I am worried he's going to stop streaming, wrap up, and leave. Um, and I want to go say hi to Jim. Uh, so we love Lafay, but I raid Lafay all the time. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna change it up today. We're gonna raid Jim. I'm going to say. Thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for sticking with me through all this nonsense. Thanks to Ryuya for the ideas. We are we are running straight on Ryuya's ideas today. Um, we former wants me to make a throne. I guess I'll make a throne, and I will just send you guys off now. Say hi to Jim. Wish him a happy birthday. Wish Jim a happy birthday. Trust me, it's probably his birthday. Uh, I'll just wait for the countdown at this point. Unless he's going to get rid of us. Um, anyways, yeah. So, I will be back. Friday. Probably. Bye.